And so this is the base and it is looking really, really nice. It's made out of a metal frame here and it's very clean looking. We do have a main extrusion for the Y axis here. And look at this profile, it's very nice profile. It's quite thin and very attractive looking. So all our cables here are coming out nicely here at the end. Our power plugs right here, we got a large power button and then the connection to the USB cable. On the back here, we can see our bed is heated and it has the support for the wire, so a very good support. And as we are back here, guys, we need to go ahead and switch our voltage, which is right back here. It's right by the switch here. And it is set to 230 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that over to 115. So make sure you do that before you know you get too far and forget about it. But yeah, guys, this thing is looking really nice and clean. And we do have a quite nice little display here with a rotary knob. So this is, a, oh, I guess, of a little bit of old school. But some people prefer this kind of interface anyway because it's much more simpler than a touch screen or, you know, things like that. So right below the knob, we do have a reset button. And on the other side, on the side here, we have the port for the full SD card. Very nice. All right, let's see what's underneath this guy. So underneath, we can see we have nice, thick rubber feet. Also a big plus because if you guys know that printers do vibrate and the vibrations go to the table what it's sitting on and having nice rubber feet helps a lot with that, with the noise. So there appears to be a power supply right here. And we do have a fan right here probably cooling the board. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out all these bolts. To anyone who's curious what the board is in, we're gonna go ahead and look inside. So for that, we're gonna need our toolkit, which actually includes quite a few interesting things in here. So we have an Allen wrench, a couple wrenches, we also get little tweezers. Very cool. Appears to be a clean out nozzle rod here to push in, I guess, maybe the filament if it gets stuck. A few more Allen wrenches. And also in the baggie, looks like we have two extra nozzles and some T-nuts with bolts. All right, so let's get all these little bolts out. All right, so all the bolts are out. Let's lay this thing down. And there we go, guys. We can see how nice and clean everything is. So we got the power supply, the AC power input here, the switch, and then we got the main board with the fan that cools it off. So let's take a closer look at the main board. All right, so this is what the main board looks like. We do have removable stepper driver circuits there. So there's two there on the bottom, and then there's one, two, three up here. So, so there's five total. Definitely an interesting looking board. So hopefully you guys can see that processor right there. And it looks like we do have a 24 volt, 360 watt power supply. So yeah, this is what it looks like underneath. Everything looks nice and tidy. I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover back on and then we'll uh, continue to the assembly. All right, so we got the base flipped around and the next thing we need to do is we need to check our bed here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab it and we're gonna wiggle it. And as you can see guys, hopefully you can see that, we have a little bit of wiggle. So what does that mean? That means that our little wheels under there are loose. So maybe you can see those wheels are not, they're under there. So one side is gonna have an eccentric nuts. So the best way I found to adjust these is to take off this bed completely because it's really hard to do it right with, you know, such a small area to work with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take these knobs off. So once the knobs are out, the bed just comes right up. Just watch out for your little springs. And here we can see the underside of the bed. So it's not insulated, but it is heated. And the connectors to the heated part are soldered on. And our brace is actually metal back here, which is very interesting. All right, so I'm gonna put the little springs on there so we don't lose them. Now, another thing to remember to check is these main bolts right here. There's one, two, three, four of them looks like, yes. So you wanna make sure these are tight so your Y axis rail here does not fluctuate at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check them and maybe snug them up. Okay, yes, yeah, so relatively tight, but they can be tighter. All right, so now we can adjust these little rollers underneath. And so there's two rollers here that are just not adjustable. And then you got two here that are adjustable. And so it's as simple as taking a wrench, turning the little eccentric nut in there till the wheel gets closer to the rail. So this process is actually kind of tricky, especially on this printer. The reason why is because the bolt that goes through here, you know, you can't access it to the bottom of it so you can't even hold it still to you know turn this so what i like to do in this situation instead of taking it all apart would be the right way but that's just way too much work to take all this apart is i'll just go ahead and adjust them where they are so i'll just go until i hit resistance and then i'll pull back same thing for this wheel back here i'll just snug it up just a bit and then pull back and one way you can check them if you stick your finger in there you can you know while putting pressure this way you can spin this wheel and see how tight it is same thing for that side 
If they can spin quite easily with just a little bit of pressure back and forth and this thing still doesn't wobble, that means you got it perfect. So it looks like I have it just right now. I'm actually quite pleased with that. I think that would be perfect right there. So, so now I can put my bed back on and this part does get a little tricky because the little springs try to run away from me. But I usually do one side and then I'll do the other side now. So that makes it a lot easier to put it on. All right, so now we're just gonna grab these knobs and screw them onto the bolts. So once you get the four knobs started, what I like to do is I like to compress them or to compress the little spring under here about halfway. That way, when we're adjusting the bed level later, we can go up or down. All right, so we're gonna check that one more time and it feels really, really good. All right guys, so for the next part, we're gonna need to install the main top frame here to the bottom part. So you're gonna need four of the longer bolts. They do have a pack of the shorter ones here. That's for other things. And so on the bottom frame itself, you can see that there's two holes over here on each side. And this is where the bolts will go through. So normally the easiest way to do this is set the printer sideways like this. Grab your upper frame part and set it down on the base here and then get a bolt ready. I'll lift the printer up carefully just a little bit and then go in there with the bolt and try to start it. So this is definitely a little bit tricky because you do have to line it up. So, But after building many printers, I realized this was the easiest way, you know, without flipping it over and stuff. But you can flip it over. That might be actually even easier. All right, so I started one. Now I'm just going to start the other. So now that we got one holding, it's a lot easier because we can tilt it up quite a bit higher here and start the other one here. So we're just going to snug these two just a little bit. Then we're going to come back and tighten them once we get the other side. So obviously same thing for this side. So you want to go ahead and tighten these up real tight. But as you can see guys, we're using the long end down. So we got a really short leverage area here to turn this thing. So in order for this to be really nice and tight, you really need to, you know, maybe grab some pliers like I'm going to do here and tighten it up harder. All right. Same thing on the other side. You're going to get those bolts nice and tight. All right, and so now we have the top frame on. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna need to install the two extruders here. And they go in the back of the top frame. So let's flip the printer around. So here we are in the back, and basically the way these things mount is T-nuts here go into the channel, you know, and then you're gonna grab your Allen wrench, loosen it, put the T-nut in the channel, and then start tightening, and the T-nut should turn and, you know, grab the channel. So we want the output here to go to the front put it on the channel just like that so then we're just going to tighten this up so i think that's about where that goes if we need to we can adjust it later back and forth that's not a big deal and same thing for this other one so it should look something like this now the instructions are a little bit vague about where and what goes where but it kind of skips where the spool holder goes at all and there's not even a picture so we're going to kind of have to estimate where our spool holders will go because our fitting is right here filament will be fed into here so putting the spool holder together is quite simple you got the metal piece with a hole here and then the plastic piece that has two nuts on it you're going to unscrew one side so the nut is going to go into the channel the channel part here and then you're going to put it in and just tighten it right there so you want the good side here towards the spool so we're just, just going to hand tighten that and that's basically it. And out of these three holes, we're just gonna use the two front ones here. So we're gonna put a little bolt in there and then start the T-nut on the other side. Then we're gonna do the other one. And that's it, that's what it should look like. And so you build two of them and they should look just like this. And so the way these things are supposed to go is kind of a little bit interesting, but they both go here right in the middle. So you're gonna put all the T-nuts in the channel there. So they're gonna go something like this. And then the roll will hang over the extruder here and feed right into it. So that's the plan. So I think the best possible way to do this is try to line up the center of the spool where it meets about straight to that inlet right there. So then that should be pretty much perfect. So we got one spool holder tight. Let's do the other one, same way. All right, and our other spool holder is on, but it's not as centered as this one is. And the reason that is because these extruders are exactly the same and the bracket actually hits the extruder before, you know, you can get closer. But that's okay, it's really close enough, so there should be no issues there. But most importantly, everything looks good here and I think this is the correct way of how to install these things. Now, the only thing that kind of makes me worried a little bit is if you guys can see that this thing really leans back. So if you put, you know, two kilograms of filament on here, this is really going to push down like that. And you can see how this frame flexes just a bit. 
So I'm a little bit of worried of, you know, like wobble back and forth like this. I wish there would be, you know, some kind of a brace here maybe that can go down because you could definitely have a brace here to really hold the weight because on this side you do have a motor that goes against here so you got somewhat of a brace on this side but this side it has no brace but we'll see how it goes maybe in practice it's going to be just fine all right so we're back at the front of the printer and the obvious things to do next here is to put these ptfe tubings into each extruder so these simply just slide into the hole and then it clamps it and that's it should be simple as that and same thing for this one but yeah guys we're making good progress and we're getting really close to being finished the next part i think is we need to connect all the electronics all right so the filament detectors are in and i think this is how they go so the spool will unwind right here straight into the film detector and then out of the film detector into the ptfe tubing pretty sure that's how it goes what i'm realizing here is that you can actually set all this up where the spool holders are and these extruders are a little bit different if you wanted to because what i'm realizing is if the spool's going to be on here it's going to be kind of hard to you know get in there so you could put these spools to the side and then the extruders towards the middle more you know you can have different orientations i guess so i'm just going to go like this because it seems like that's the way they want it all right so the next part is wiring and they are bunched up here nicely with the zip tie so we do have quite a bit of wires here but definitely don't get overwhelmed because they are all labeled and should be really easy to figure out what goes where so we can see the longer wires probably go up and then the shorter wires here you know probably stay down here somewhere so let's start with these these are like not too long and it looks like they go to the y here which they do not they're actually the x-axis which is over here so the y is actually the motor is already connected underneath we just need to connect the little switch the end stop switch here and this one is labeled y so they are all labeled so they're quite simple to figure out so now we have the z axis here and the z axis is simple too there's a z on there so we're going to plug in the motor and the z axis end stop switch it's kind of hard to see guys but is around the motor on this side and the plug is on the other end on the other side of this you can see the switch right here so that'll plug in right there which is a little hard to get to all right so we got that plugged in the wires are long enough everything looks good so let's move to our x axis which we'll find the wire here that has x on it with an m which is for motor and the plugs are obviously larger on the motor smaller on the switch so the motor plugs underneath and our x-axis switch is actually inside this little cover it's gonna be kind of hard to show you guys but it's right inside of there and it's also a little bit hard to get to but not impossible right in there and that's it for the x-axis so the next wire we have is actually a plug a pretty large one and this actually plugs into the hot end right here on top and then it simply just clicks into here just like that and that's it so and then we have a few more wires left which all go to the top and so these are the wirings for the extruders and the filament detectors here so we're going to have an extruder one and an extruder zero looks like so i'm not sure which one is which so we'll just make this one one and this one zero and the reason i'm thinking that is because if you notice this is the first thing so it must go to the first one and so this one's a little longer because the wires do come out on this side of the printer so e1 will go here and then the filament detector wire which is e1 also and this thing is really micro we'll plug in just like that same thing for this side plug the motor plug for the filament detection all right so that looks pretty good so we do need to do some wire management here and there and there's two little holes right here i'm thinking maybe a zip tie can definitely do the job here so they did include zip tie so we can go ahead and zip tie all these parts here all right, so I got all the wire zip ties and I actually zip tied the tubings here together and that seems to be where it needs to be. So it's definitely looking a little cleaner. So we only have a few more things to do, put on the sticker on top here. And also I forgot that I do need to adjust the wheel here because when you when I roll this, there's jumps, like there's a little part that grabs right here. So that just tells me the wheels are way too tight and I can't even turn this wheel by hand tighter than it needs to be. So we're gonna grab our wrench and turn that eccentric nut in there to try to loosen up this thing. So you don't want this to be too tight. You just want it to be tight enough where it doesn't move and has a good feel to it. Like it's not moving around when you're flexing it. You know, and these wheels should move really easily, just freely by spinning them. So if they're too hard to turn, that means you probably got it too tight. And this has to feel really smooth with no bumps or jitters in it. All right, so since we're back here, you can kind of see how I zip tied all the uh, cables here. And so it does run up and down with no issues and everything reaches. And it definitely looks much cleaner when they're all just together. So since we're back here, let's go ahead and plug in our power cord here, just like that. 
All right, so for the last part, we got to put this Biltec style material on top of this aluminum here, and it is a sticker. And if you guys watched me for a little while, you know that I'm not so good with stickers. So, but I'm going to take my time here and try to do it correctly, and we should have a nice bill plate after I <laughs> stick this on. So, so I'm going to go ahead and start with that corner. So I'm not going to peel the whole thing. I'm just going to start peeling the corner and kind of like hold it like this. So you definitely want to make sure you don't got any kind of dust or oil under here. So, so I'm going to go to the corner and line it up. All right, so it looks like we're really close right there. I want to make sure the back is real good too. Okay, so that looks perfect actually. So now I'm just going to grab this piece and pull it slowly as I rub it down here. And this should give us a nice result. So far, so good. All right guys, so it looks like this is gonna be a successful installation here. It appears to be that I don't have any bubbles or anything weird and it's lined up literally perfectly. So yeah, I guess you just need to take your time and line everything up correctly and kind of massage it in from one corner down. So, would you look at that? All right, so we got our build plate in and it's just a regular, very fine build tech type material. There's not much roughness to it at all. So hopefully we won't have any issues sticking to the plate.